Welcome along to today's vlog. Don't forget, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. It would be great to get to 12,000 subscribers for the end of the year. If you are my 12,000 subscriber, I have something very, very special in store for you. For all of you. And let's not just give it to 12,000 subscribers. Let's give it to all of you 12,000. It's amazing to be saying those numbers. Uh, thank you very much. I'm sorry we don't have as many vlogs as we used to. Time is just, life is just too crazy at the minute uh, to comprehend it. But I couldn't let this particular anniversary pass without making a video. That is 10 years ago, last week, uh, I first played this Mark VI uh, at Woodwind Exchange in Bradford. I went up there, I was working with Max Sax out of Austin at the time, they had a fantastic alto that they were wanting me to promote, and it was, I'd only moved over to England about two months beforehand, been living in Ireland for a number of years, and I wanted to be able to take this particular Imperial alto to a number of different dealers. So I went to Woodwind Exchange in Bradford, thinking, give this to Stuart, let him have a blow on it, and maybe I'll, I'll just see what's knocking about. He said, go and have a look in my Mark VI room. So I went to his Mark VI room and I tried about nine different Mark VI's and left my balance action there and part exit it for this one. Um, it's a really, really beautiful one. It's a 6.7. I'm not going to give you the full serial number. That would normally indicate that it was made in 1956. But I actually know as a fact, uh, when I was meeting uh, Florent from Selma uh, in this video, and if you haven't already, make sure you check out my tour of the Selma factory that I did in June 2019, that this particular Mark VI was made on the 19th of December, 1955. So it is... 66 years old this year, can nearly get a bus pass in this country. Um, so it's the pensioner that I constantly work with. Saying that though, it's had quite a few differences. You'll notice it's got an aftermarket neck. This is the KB Sachs Vanguard neck. I did a review of it here way back when I got this neck. Why do I play this neck over the stock Mark VI neck? Well, I mean, this was something Selma was saying to me, you know, look, the neck is everything about the sound. And yeah, the neck that came in the Sachs is great. And you can see me playing it on a number of videos previously before getting the KB Sachs. But this neck, it just, it just helps with the intonation. Mark VI's are notoriously badly, uh, some notes are really terribly out of tune, but it's those intricacies, those idiosyncrasies, that's the word I'm looking for, that give the Mark VI that unique sound. Um, but this KB sax neck, it just opens up the sound a little bit more, but the best bit is the intonation, especially up top, it's flawless. It's just so easy to play it in tune. So why not? Why not go for something that's going to give you something to play in tune? Likewise with the Sias mouthpiece, people talk and moaning and sort of go, oh, it looks like a toy dam. There's my Sias mouthpiece. Why did I keep playing the Sias? It's so easy to blow. It's so free blowing. There's no resistance to it. It gives me the sound I want. And again, flawless intonation. And at the end of the day, being in tune is such an important part of being a musician. Anyway, back to the Mark VI. So today actually marks 10 years since I ever gave it its first public performance. And it was playing that start of that Chris Potter version of Oh Come All You Faithful that I've adapted over the years. And I'll be playing that on the 19th of December. Subject to the not being a lockdown coming back in again in the UK, if really fearful, I've just I've got to make a call in a minute uh, because we've got jazz carols in Westminster back on the 19th. Supposedly, I'm hoping, praying, everything it will happen because I put so much work into it, uh, and it would just be so good to be back. And the one in 2019 was so so good. It was just such a really really great uh, time. So I'm hoping we'll get back to it. Other adjustments I've had made to it. I mean, I had this done. Um, almost initially when I got it, which was to get the low B flat key raised up. I just like it being there. Likewise, the low D, I remember Ray Wilkes, my old teacher, saying to me when I was a 10 year old playing tenor saxophone, you know, that people, pros end up getting the, the palm keys moved further out. And because at the time I couldn't get my hand around the saxophone, but he's right. You know, I, I do like to have that D there. It does sometimes move around a bit. I need to glue it back on again. But the biggest change I've had, and Selma did this for me in Paris, um, again, you know, on the tour video, um, which was get this G key adjusted because I broke my finger in 2016 uh, in four different places in my, my G finger and I just needed I noticed I was getting a lot of problems and one of the things we noticed was that I was constantly playing the G in the wrong place so what we did we moved the key um, and the key is in the right place and this Selma put this material on for me 
and it's been brilliant. It's been a lifesaver because it's kept it played on that. The other thing was the overhaul. Now, I commented in this video about does the Mark VI wear out? Because one of the things that I was noticing when I got the horn, and again, around about 2016, 2017, is that I was having to go into the shop in Cambridge will win and read at least once every couple of months to basically get something adjusted. There'd be a leak somewhere, a pad had fallen off, a bit of cork had come loose, and it was getting more and more frequent that something was going wrong. And when it goes wrong on a gig, that's really, really, really frustrating. So what I did is um, I decided to bite the bullet and get the instrument overhauled in May 2017. Uh, you can watch the video here. And it was the best decision I've made because since then, it, yes, it's had a, a couple of services, but it doesn't. It hasn't been in and out of the shop all the time like it used to be. And this is something that maybe you fall into, and I know I did um, before I sort of was playing professionally. My dad used to take my horn in every year to get a service. I don't think most saxophones need servicing every year. If they're in good condition, you know, yes, okay, every couple of years maybe get it in for a quick quick look at to maybe get a few pads sorted. But the best thing you can do, if you flesh, especially with a vintage horn, and this has been my experience, is get it overhauled with a really, really, really good technician. Um, you know, someone you trust, someone who's got a great reputation, uh, and that's what I did with this. I spent, you know, five, six hundred pounds having it done, but it's been great, and it's like having a new horn back. But the big thing has been that since that point, it's not needed to be going backwards and forwards to the shop, and I've played a lot of gigs on it, and it's not uh, had that issue. The other thing about this horn, and I'm going to get on to playing it again in a minute, is it's my longest serving horn now. I started playing saxophone in 1991. Uh, I had an Amati uh, tenor saxophone at that point, and I kept hold of that Amati until 97, uh, when I uh, went to Sixth Form College here in the UK, 16 years old, and upgraded to a Yamaha 62. And that was the instrument I was playing when I first started going out playing gigs that I was getting paid for. Um, and that instrument lasted me from 1997 to 2005 when I got rid of the Yamaha 62 and got my Selma Balanced Action. I wish I'd kept my Selma Balanced Action. I wish I'd kept the Balanced Action and had this at the same time. It would be far better. In fact, some of you know the circumstances I'm in at the moment, I often look at uh, bills I receive from lawyers and go, yeah, that's uh, another Balanced Action or that's a Mark VI. Um, but anyway, that's, that's life. Um, and then from 2011 until present day, I've had this Mark VI. I've got other tenors. I've got Yanagasawa tenors. I've got a Yamaha tenor. But this is my workhorse. This is the instrument I do most, all, if not all, of my gigs on. It's a really, really wonderful instrument. And I, I love the depth of its tone. And I love its response. And most of all, what you're always looking for is in, in an instrument is an instrument that, disappears. An instrument that allows your voice to come out and that's what this does for me. <laughs> son Charlie will pick him up from school first of all and then take him to his trumpet lesson. Charlie's been learning now just over a year, in fact it's a year ago today he got his first trumpet, he'd been borrowing a friend of mine's trumpet before that. But I had a school concert today and it was amazing. I said to him beforehand, so the real difference is to watch how you played last year where he could just about stumble through Silent Night and then look how he played today when he nailed Greg Fisherman's Narragansett Avenue. Um, and that's what a year's worth of lessons of practice in as many days as you can do and I say this to all my students I say judge yourself on a year it's six months a year never on a week by week basis it's only on the week by week basis by practicing and doing the work can you then well see that progress after a year it's also a really weird one for me because obviously in the past I've had a lot of parents bringing kids to lessons and now I'm the parent bringing his child to the lesson and it's been weird because he's most of the time he's done it on zoom uh, and now he has an in-person lesson I've got to say he prefers an in-person lesson, his teacher prefers an in-person lesson. I know it's the best thing for him to have an in-person lesson, but it's a right pain in the butt for me. <laughs> Thank you. 
given it's the 7th, 8th of December today, it's definitely time where you need to be listening to some Christmas music. So check out my Christmas playlist below. Thank you very much, thank you. Rather frustratingly, the cafe is closed at four. So I'm gonna have to do this email in the car. If you don't already get my Wednesday email, then um, go to cambridgesaxophone.com, hit the link, and you can catch the email there. You've got four free saxophone lessons as well. I'm gonna send that email now, so uh, suitable point for me to sign off the vlog for today. It's great to be back. I'm sorry I can't do vlogs more often. Maybe in the new year, maybe I'll make it my new year's resolution to get back to doing more vlogs. I've asked him for some Q and A's actually, and no one's been giving me any Q and A's. So maybe you can give me some Q and A's and I can get back and do a vlog for you. Speak to you soon, bye bye.